And uh, thank you for being here. How can you tell? Yeah, I think I can tell who you are. We began this project in 2018 uh, with a hope and a dream to get rid of some terrible, a uh, very uh, bad looking situation here. And I think we did it. And I'm so proud of everybody that did it. So thank you. Last year, we got a grant from the city and that was for $6,500, and that helped to start everything. We got a $3,500 uh, donation from Union Point Apartments, and that's how come we are including them. We're trying to make this an inclusive project that brings both of our communities together. I want to um, thank all of you, but I'm gonna start by telling you some of the people that have played a key role. Tim Waters, you're on the city council, and you guys had bucks, so thank you. <laughs> and uh, Wayne, <laughs> Wayne is Wayne Tomic is the uh, neighborhood resource specialist from the neighborhood, and he runs the neighborhood group leaders association, and that is where we had to apply for a grant and jump through a bunch of hoops. So thank you, Wayne. I want to thank our board members. Uh, Carol Moores is here. Raise your hand when I say it. And is Mike here? Did Mike come? Okay. Mike Blair isn't here, but we thank Mike because he's been the money guy. He's kept track of the money for me. And Ned Pinkerton. There we go. Thank you. Did Darren Davidson make it here? I don't think so. Okay. Darren Davidson is with the County Extension, and when we, when this idea was just a little baby germ in our minds, we went over and met with her, and it was her direction that helped us form the, uh, the building blocks for this project, and so we really appreciate her work. And is Kristen uh, here from the Union Point Apartments? I don't think so, okay. Uh, I also want you to know, uh, it was Blue Vista Landscape and Design, that did the hardscape for us, and uh, they did an excellent job. And then environmental designs, there are landscapers, they did the, they put the stone down for us and took up all of the weeds and got rid of the fabric. So they, they really made it look great. And then Joel Thies is over there. Joel, raise your hand. Joel built the solitary bee house. <laughs> and is Kristen Lester here? Okay, Kristen Lester is a resident, and she painted our little learning box. Right now, our learning box does not have anything in it, but eventually it's going to have some, uh, I mean, we have the stuff, but we're just, due to the pandemic, we're not putting it out yet, but we're going to have um, field guides and magnifying glasses in there for kids to, to do some research while they're in the habitat. And um, Ray Splickdahl, where's Ray? Where's Ray? There's Ray. Ray built the arbor. And when you go through here today, you will be as surprised as I was to see the adorable painted rocks. Karen um, Ward painted the rocks, and we have materials if anybody or any grandkids or any kids want to paint rocks, we've got the supplies and we'll share them with anybody. Uh, and then finally, well, no, for, uh, first I want to, before I say finally, I will thank all of the friends of the pollinator habitat for everything that you've done. If you're a friend of the pollinator habitat, raise your two hands. Come on, come on, come on. Yay! Yay! And finally, I want to thank Tom Peekenbrock. Raise your hand, Tom. Tom designed this. He's been our project manager, and he has kept, he's kept us on track, and he's uh, calmed us down when things look bad, and we appreciate everything Tom has done. Thank you, Tom. And now I would like to introduce again Tim Waters, 
you like to say something? Can I take my mask off? You may take your mask okay. off. I'll try not to you're, you're project um, yeah, too much. So thanks for the invitation, by the way. Thanks to all of you for all that you've done here. Wayne does a terrific job with the Neighborhood Group Leaders Association and really manages the whole neighborhood improvement program. Uh, the city does commit funds to that, and, and then we count on HOAs and, and organized neighborhood groups to turn that money into something special, and that is what you've done here. You have been, this, this, the Shattergrass HOA, you should know, is as well represented in the city as any neighborhood group in town. Uh, and it's Laura and, and others in this group. I have to say, I, I point to this when others ask, you know, what, what, what could we do as an HOA? I said, call Laura. Check out what's going on over at the Shadowgrass HOA, because you guys have done an awesome job. So, one other comment, and I've probably said this too many times. This will be the politician, I guess, coming out in me. But when I was, as an educator, I spent my career in the field of education, I had a sign that my wife gave me maybe the first year I was teaching, and I had it in my, my office wall the entire, my entire career. And it said, it went something like this. <clears throat> I used to ask, why doesn't somebody do something? Then I realized I am somebody, right? Now, don't wait for someone else. Well, if I were to paraphrase that, this whole area, I think, had to be restored because of the construction that come through. And I'm guessing somebody, at some point in time, said, why doesn't somebody do something about that? And you all said, we are somebody, and you did it. So good on you for taking the responsibility, owning this project, and turning what was a kind of a devastated into area into something really special. And I can hardly wait till you have those materials in, in the magnifying glasses, because I have two granddaughters who are going to enjoy coming over here and doing some research. Wonderful. So thank you so much. Wonderful. Thank you. I get used to this part. <laughs> uh, well, I'll, I'll be brief. I know the bees are anxious. Uh, but I, you know, I want to say this. Uh, to me, this is really what the Neighborhood Group Leaders Association is all about. Uh, you know, it, it's a network that we have fostered for decades in Longmont. It's a very unique uh, organization, but it's really about empowering residents uh, throughout our communities to come together and work together and improve their communities. Uh, and I, you know, this has really become, uh, I, I was really excited when uh, you guys proposed this project. I thought, well, that's a really great and inventive project. We haven't really seen a lot of, uh, a lot of pollinator gardens, pollinator habitats built by neighborhoods in Longmont. Um, but I know there's a lot of interest, uh, especially in the last uh, couple of years as you've been doing this. There's a lot of interest from other neighborhoods and what you're doing here. Um, but it's, it's you know, it, it brings together all those aspects that make neighborhoods great. Right? You, 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 had, you had a need, you identified it, you came together, you worked together, you pulled from all the resources and assets. You, know, you, you found that clearly all these different pieces, you have all these assets in your community, people who can build arbors and people who can you know, uh, build these different habitats, the, the rocks, like it brings all those together. Um, and the fact that you extended it beyond just creating this habitat, but um, my, my favorite part is that the, the, it integrated the uh, educational piece into it. Uh, so it's going to live on way beyond just the, the habitat piece. It's going to educate, educate children and bring them up knowing things that, you know, maybe some of us didn't know when we were growing up how important pollinators are uh, to our world. Um, it, 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 I also want to say that it, it has become such a model project that we're actually using it as an example. We have a, a, a new funding program that we just launched this week, actually, uh, for neighborhoods. Um, and we actually used this whole process that you've gone through, uh, really going to when you had the original uh, kind of con conception uh, of talking and learning about pollinators, uh, all the way through creation of the habitat. Uh, and, and we used that, uh, those steps as an example of the different kind of projects you can do through this funding. So uh, it kind of lives on in that aspect too. Uh, and we hope that that's going to encourage a lot of other neighborhoods to do similar kind of projects of uh, which really meets the city's sustainability goals of transferring, you know, this grass turf um, over into really productive space. So, uh, yeah, I, I want to thank, you know, obviously uh, Laura and the, the, the friends have done so much work on this. It's a really great model from that aspect. It's all, all the community for supporting this kind of a project and being a part of it. So thank you uh, on behalf of the city. Uh, one more comment. One more comment. With all, the, with all the drama going on in the country and around the world today, uh, 
you look for bright spots, this is one. And in a city that has not only committed the resources to support this, the fellow right here who's, who's uh, operating this camera's name is Craig Stevens. Craig's the new executive editor of Longmont Public Media. That's your public access television service provider the city contracts with. So Craig's here to capture this, share it on YouTube and on the Longmont Public Media website and on the Facebook page. So you'll, you'll see it in the programming. Look for it and take advantage of what they what they bring to the city. They're doing a pretty extraordinary job in trying to create uh, interesting video to help we all, all of us learn our way forward, not just through the tough times, but through the bright spots. So thanks to Craig for being here. Okay, so then final step of this thing is I've got 400 bees that we're going to release. They are solitary bees. They're gentle but they're extremely excited to get out of their box. I, they're supposed to be in a little uh, silk bag, and when I opened up the box to, to get them out of the, to get the bag out, they were coming out at me at home. So they're in there. I'm gonna be putting them into the bee house, and Ingrid, would you like to come up? Ingrid, tell them who you're with. He's going, whoa, what happened? Come on up, You'll, we'll have to give him time. Oh, look, they're just, it's in the go. Oh, they're very small. They're yeah. very small. They're called leaf cutter bees. So, so how do you get them to accept your new house? We have a special, uh, <laughs> well, they're, hopefully they're going to just They'll love it because it's so <laughs> great. But we did add a little bit of an attractant to them. So, okay, that they, so, yeah, so, so it Ingrid, what we're going to be doing is just opening it up and just laying it in here. At, because there's many cocoons left to... Uh, we love pollinators! Yay! Okay, we were